What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video doing another mock draft. The support on these has been crazy over the last few months, so I am eager and excited to get into another one. However, the draft order has changed quite significantly over the past few months. So, or even the past few weeks I should say, excuse me. So, I think it is imperative now more than ever to pop back in, re-update what I think could happen, and this time with trades. If you want to see another mock draft just based off only the current draft order as it changes on a week-to-week -week basis make sure to hit that subscribe button we are on the path to 250,000 subscribers so if you're not subscribed right now it's free go down scroll down a bit hit that subscribe button so you're subscribed so you don't miss out on these videos and i got more mock drafts coming more nfl draft content super excited i want to do videos where i kind of talk about some of the best players of the class and why i think they're so good or maybe even so bad in some cases and uh yeah Make sure you're staying tuned. Subscribe for that as we get into this. This is going to have trades. Should be a fun one. I'm going to get a little bit wild with it. And as we get to our first trade, I'll explain what we're going to be doing. But, I mean, for the first couple picks, it really is just going to be chalk here. As I'm going Trevor Lawrence to the Jets. They have the number one overall pick. They lost to the Raiders and they threw the game so hard. Running cover zero. Sent a huge blitz. And had man coverage down the field against fast receivers, including Henry Ruggs. It was a huge mistake for the Jets if they wanted to win, but as far as tanking goes, it was a huge play to keep getting Trevor Lawrence as the Jags continue to lose. But I think the Jets have such a high pick. What could happen is maybe they still like Darnold. They trade this pick for a monster haul and rebuild the rest of their team, but I think you got to take Lawrence there. Justin Fields at two, kind of for the same reasons, just too dynamic of a player to not take when you have kind of a weird quarterback situation. Bengals on the clock at number three. I'm going Panay Sewell. Listen, you got to protect your franchise QB and Joe Burrow. Tours ACL while getting hit. You don't want that to happen again. So you bring back uh, help for him in the form of Panay Sewell when he returns. So Panay Sewell, probably the best tackle in the class, I think very easily. So he makes a lot of sense here at number three. Chargers at number four, but they're not actually going to be at number four. I have a trade down happening as I have... Washington football team is going to be trading up for this pick. So let me go ahead and do AFC Chargers. NFC is football team on top. And it's going to be number 10 overall by Washington football team. A third round pick. They traded for one, so they have another one. And also a third round pick next year. Chargers trade number four. And to sweeten the deal to make this go through, we add in a second round pick next year as well. So a one, a three, a two, and a three. A three this year, a two and a three next year, along with number 10 swapping for number four. And that trade will be accepted. The Chargers have accepted the offer as football team moves up to number four. The Chargers, who don't really see a reason to pick at that spot, the best offensive lineman's off the board. They don't see a reason to take another offensive lineman in the draft inside the top five the talent just isn't good enough right now so they decided to move down to number 10 washington football team who really has a weird quarterback situation decides to move up and of course it is for a quarterback and why not take one who has played so well this year in zach wilson for byu cowboys at five another interesting spot for them or for another team but patrick sertan's the pick here they've struggled all season long to defend the pass chidobi awuzie is an impending free agent got to bring someone in that can help actually make a difference and this is a pure cb1 patrick sertan to the dallas cowboys eagles at number six another nfc east team and they are going to go with a receiver in the form of jamar chase probably the best one in the draft i think chase makes a lot of sense at this spot as we have yet another trade panthers at number seven another situation where they really aren't that bad of a team and maybe they'd consider a quarterback at this spot but the top three qbs are all off the board I'm going to have the Panthers trading down with a team who might be quite eager to move up for a quarterback and get their franchise guy because it doesn't seem like it's going to be Cam Newton. So I think that should tell you exactly what team's going to be involved in the trade here. We're going to do the Patriots and the Panthers. So Patriots moving up from 16 to number 7. We're going to swap those picks. We're also going to give them one of the multitude of fourth round picks that the Patriots have. We're going to give two and also a first round pick next year. So a one, two fours, and a one next year to move up from 16 to seven. And the Panthers 
have accepted the offer. Meaning the Patriots move up to number seven. And of course, like a lot of these trades wouldn't work out for the exact value in real life because you never know based on leverage what teams are actually going to make moves for. So we have to do the best we can with the actual uh, trade feedback system in this. So I wouldn't take too much stock in the actual trade value, but in the teams moving up or down. Patriots at seven though, and they are going Trey Lance. Really, really interesting prospect. Someone I think would develop really well with the Patriots. They've shown a knack for developing QBs over the years. I mean, like, it seems like everyone can play well in the Patriots system, honestly. Like, even Cam Newton has been not terrible this year. Not good as a passer, don't get me wrong. But as an overall player, he's been fine. He's been a great runner, and the offense has changed to kind of complement that. Trey Lance is kind of a do-it-all player that I think Bill Belichick would love to have in New England. Patriots get a stud at number seven. Falcons at number eight, kind of a no-brainer. You need to improve your defense more than anything else. And Gregory Rousseau is still available at number eight. No-brainer. Got to improve your edge spot. Tack McKinley, not on the team anymore. There was trade rumors, and he just got straight up cut after his fifth year option was not picked up. Dolphins at number nine. Kind of another no-brainer for me. Micah Parsons is still available at number nine. The Dolphins, who need so much help at linebacker, jump at the opportunity to take him, and I really don't blame them. As the Chargers are back on the clock, trading down from number four to number 10, and they go with the best uh, best pure left tackle available to them, and that is going to be Sam Cosme out of the University of Texas. Has been really solid for a number of years now at UT, so he makes a lot of sense to protect Justin Herbert. They have a right tackle in Brian Bulaga. They need a left tackle, and I think Sam Cosme is going to help out quite a lot. Broncos at 11. I am going with Caleb Farley. It's not that their secondary is terrible, right? But A.J. Boye is a free agent. You need someone on the other side of Michael Ojemudia, who seems like he could be a pretty good option going forward. He's played well as a rookie. Farley hasn't been playing cornerback for too long. Came to VT as a receiver. Played receiver for about a year before transitioning to cornerback. But he's been great at corner. So might have some growing pains initially, but he is a uh, very solid player. So fluid in coverage, and his instincts are already fairly good for someone that is still learning the position. Lions at number 12. This was a tough one. But it's just what makes more sense for the Lions. And I think it's going to be receiver. And I think it's going to be Devontae Smith. He has been so incredible. One of the best receivers that the University of Alabama has really ever seen. And you talk about Amari Cooper, Julio Jones, most recently Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddell. Like they've had so many amazing receivers of late. And Devontae Smith is clearly unbelievable. Lions get themselves a stud here for Matt Stafford to throw to. Bears at number 13. I thought about a QB here for a long time. I really did. But at the end of the day for me, I think their biggest issue is the offensive line. They are so bad, especially at tackle. When everyone's healthy, their interior really isn't too bad with James Daniels, with Cody Whitehair. But tackle is a really, really rough spot. The top three or four quarterbacks even top four QBs are off the board I don't think they go QB here I think they go offensive line and they look at Christian Darisaw still available and they jump at the opportunity to take him and this was another one where I struggled for a really long time to figure out what to do and I'm gonna say this team does end up taking a quarterback maybe a slight reach for Kyle Trask but they get their QB of the future he has, is an amazing QB he set SEC records, and while his arm strength above average isn't anything super crazy, his decision-making is really solid. His accuracy is really solid. I think in the 49ers system, Kyle Trask would kind of be amazing. Their power run focused. He wouldn't even be asked to do all that much. So I think they have a really, really good player here in their QB of the future. Cardinals at 15. I'm going Quiddy Pay. He's lasted at 15. I think it's pretty good value for them. When you look at what they have on the edge, it really isn't a whole lot outside of Chandler Jones, who is getting older. So you do need to get someone in there for the future. Four-year rookie contract plus a fifth-year option. Chandler Jones will not be in Arizona in the next four or five years, I can guarantee you. So Quiddy Pay comes in and is a solid option off the edge for the Cardinals, who desperately need to put more pressure on the quarterback. Panthers at 16. I'm going Kyle Pitts. This was a tough pick all around, but I think he would make their offense dynamic. You look at Christian McCaffrey at wide receiver. Robbie Anderson's been great. DJ Moore is a tremendous young player. Kyle Pitts at tight end makes them nearly unstoppable. 
Doesn't really matter who their QB is at that point. We're going to stick with Teddy Bridgewater. And he has so many weapons he can go to. So many mismatches all over the field. I think Kyle Pitts would be an incredible option for Carolina. Ravens at number 17. This one, another no-brainer for me. As I'm going with Wyatt Davis. They need help on the interior of the offensive line so badly. It's terrible. Their tackles are going to come back and be healthy. I know that Orlando Brown Jr. is still healthy playing left tackle. But with Ronnie Stanley back at left tackle next year, Orlando Brown Jr. back over to right tackle, you need help on the interior. Without Marshall Yonda, the Ravens offense has kind of looked lost. Wyatt Davis could help that out quite significantly. At number 18, I'm going with Aziz Ojolari. Sick, stud pass rusher for the Georgia Bulldogs. Really, really talented player, and they need help off the edge. Cleveland Furrell just really isn't developing the way that they wanted him to. Max Crosby is a good player, but you need more than just two edge rushers in today's NFL. And Aziz, or Aziz Ojolari could definitely end up being that really, really talented player. As we have my favorite team, the Giants, at number 19. And you know what? I think it seems crazy that Jalen Waddell has fallen to 19. One of my favorite players in college football, if not my favorite and has fallen to my favorite team. I understand that. I think some people are going to be mad about this pick, but the team picking in front don't really need a QB so much. I think the only other team that really would have considered Jalen Waddle is maybe the Lions at 12. I think maybe the Dolphins at 9, but Micah Parsons was too good to pass up at that range. So I guess I could see Jalen Waddle falling to number 19 after a huge, huge injury to a really important part of his body on the legs where he, you know, his speed is a huge part of his game. So Waddle falls to 19. I would be over the moon with this. Love Jalen Waddle. And I love what he would do for the Giants offense that desperately struggles on offense. Although the defense has looked great of late. Vikings at number 20. I'm going with Sean Slater. He's a versatile guy. I don't think he really would be playing tackle for them. I think this is more transition inside to guard, but Plays tackle at Northwestern. I know some teams actually think of him as a center, which you wouldn't need with Garrett Bradbury. But you have a, an extremely versatile offensive lineman here that could help out a multitude of different positions on this line. Think of him maybe as your Elton Jenkins with the Packers. At number 21, I am giving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers an edge rusher in Joseph Osai out of Texas. He's been so good for Texas. I think he fits the scheme in Tampa really, really well. Thought about offensive line for a while, but just didn't think there were any offensive linemen really worth taking at this point, especially with Donovan Smith's contract still at left tackle. So we're not going to take anyone available. I mean, if you look at offensive tackle, you have Jalen Mayfield, who's good, but is a right tackle, and that's where Tristan Wirfs has been amazing. I just don't think it happens, as we have the Dolphins at 22, and we're going receiver. Terrace Marshalls looked so good for LSU this year as a true number one with Jamar Chase opting out he's been great need more weapons on that offense and i think terrace marshall definitely would offer that here uh mid to late in the first round colts at 23 another position another team where you think about maybe taking a qb but we are going offensive line this time it's going to be liam eichenberg really really solid player for uh for notre dame he's looked great this year and even though i didn't have the bucks taking a tackle i think the colts with anthony costanzo being as old as he is and his contract running out. You need to find a replacement for the future. He doesn't necessarily even have to play right away, but I think would be your starter in two years. So Liam Eikenberg here in the first round. Too good a value to pass up for the Colts who need the position more. Have the Titans at 24, another team. Really struggle with who to go here because I thought a long time about giving them J2 Fele, but I ended up settling on an extremely athletic edge rusher out of Penn State in the form of Jason Owe. Solid player. I mean, athleticism traits off the charts. It'll be interesting to see uh, how we would perform on the other side of Harold Landry. Really, really, really doubt Jadavion Clowney plays for the Titans next year. As the Jets are here at number 25, second pick here in the first round. Of course, went with Trevor Lawrence earlier. And this time we address the other side of the ball in the form of J.C. Horn. Listen, the Jets got exposed yesterday at the end of the game when it mattered most in man coverage down the field. J.C. Horn had a great year for the Gamecocks. Man cover corner would work for the Jets, but they just fired uh, Greg Williams, so new defensive coordinators. Who knows what their scheme's going to be? But J.C. Horn played super, super well. I can see him going a lot higher than this. Jags at 26. I'm going with Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State. One of the best tight ends in the draft. Really, really good player. And the Jags, who have nothing at tight end for the most part, 
get a big difference maker as an extension of their offensive line. Number 27, got the Bills. I'm going with a cornerback and one of my favorite in the entire draft and Eric Stokes out of Georgia. Really, really good player. Super high ceiling. They get a true CB2 on the other side of Tredavious White. Browns at number 28. They need linebacker more than anything else in my opinion. And there's a pretty good one available. I think you can have Mac Wilson very easily as your inside backer. Even Sione Takitaki playing in that role sometimes. I think your strong side linebacker is probably going to be Jacob Phillips. So you need a will. And what better one than Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa? Fits that will roll super well to play on the weak side. And I think would help out the Browns significantly as they need someone to run with tight ends. They need someone to go sideline to sideline. And Owusu Koromoa can definitely fill that role. Number 29, we have the Packers. This is a weird one because I always want to give them a receiver. Just help out Aaron Rodgers. But it, it's their defense that's really bad. And Zabin Collins, I think, would give them a whole ton to work with as someone that can play inside and outside. I think he's probably best suited to be a strong side linebacker because he can still rush the passer. But he's also someone that plays off the ball really, really well. And the Packers need linebacker very, very badly. Zayvon Collins is a solid pick for them. Chiefs at number 30. Got to give Patrick Mahomes more time. Want to keep him healthy long term. And Elijah Vera Tucker's looked great for the Trojans so far this year at USC in just a few games. He's trending up as one of the best offensive linemen in the class. Chiefs get a good player at number 30. Saints at number 31. I'm going Sean Wade. He's looked not so great this year transitioning to the boundary. But as a nickel cornerback, I think he would be incredible. I think that would fit well with the Saints. Or they can play him on the boundary as he continues to develop. Need someone on the other side of uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Don't really have a ton of cornerback. But if Janoris Jenkins stays and plays well... Sean Wade feels right easily into the nickel and could be a really solid option for you. And then at 32, we have the Steelers. And I'm giving them Patrick Jones, keeping the Pittsburgh player in Pittsburgh. I think Patrick Jones is a really solid player. He's far down the board on the Draft Network's rankings, but I think Jones could easily go in the first round. He's a really, really good player, and we have a fun storyline keeping the pit guy in Pittsburgh, but I think it makes sense for more than just that. He's a really good player. Bud Dupree is going to be a free agent. Need someone on the other side of your stud edge rusher in TJ Watt. Patrick Jones could be it. Bigger guy, but is a really, really talented athletic force to be reckoned with. Could easily be a first round pick. And that is my mock draft with trades. Kind of got a little bit crazy. I'm sure per usual, there's going to be a lot of disagreements and whatever, but I had a few trades in there. Only a couple. Just wanted to experiment with it. And for the rest, we pretty much just had chalk, but that's the way she goes sometimes. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, though. Thank you for liking, subscribing, commenting, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Joke. I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.